Electronic typewriters can be really cool and interesting, but incredibly complicated until you kind of learn some basics around them. There are actually tons of different kinds of typewriters, and especially electronic typewriters, but uh, I kind of narrow it down to mechanical typewriters, the original ones, electric typewriters, which is the ones where it's exact, pretty much identical to a regular mechanical typewriter, except that they're basically is motor-powered key presses, so they can uh, usually be a little easier to use. And then there's uh, electronic typewriters, like the Triumph Adler Satellite 3 I have here, where it has like a computer keyboard, and some various other functions to it, but everything you do exactly happens on the paper. And then there's word processors like this Brother WP760D, which allows you to kind of preview the text that you're typing before you actually type it out or print it. It actually has to do full documents on it, so it's basically the precursor to computers and word processors like Word. And then there are portable typewriters, which tend to be very small, compact, battery powered, and usually don't allow you to do complete word processing, but tend to at least let you preview the current line you're doing. And some of them can actually save whole documents, but definitely on a much smaller, simpler screen. So as with any electronic device, you need to turn it on. And in that, it's figuring out where its position is, and it's also figuring out where the actual position is on the daisy wheel, as this is a daisy wheel one. So one of the most important things is loading paper, and every typewriter is different how it handles this. Um, some of them are automatic, some require you to turn the platen knob, which is that little good thing there, and some of them actually have auto-load keys and all kinds of other fancy ways. But before loading our paper, there's actually some little things you need to set up. So on here, we have that that allows you to set what your paper size is. I'm using US letter, which is as wide as A4. And then once you've got that set to whatever paper you're doing, kind of set your paper in. And then for most of them, you need to make sure you have the paper release lever actually locked, which is the lever on the right side usually, uh, as some of them will be weird. So let's go ahead and load it like normal. This one features an auto load, so all I have to do is bring the paper insert lever down, and it'll automatically load my paper. And then just bring that down. And then when you want to remove your paper, release the lock, and you can pull it right out. Now let's see what happens if I try loading it with a lever actually unlocked. Yeah, not working so well. Let's try with the actual uh, platen. Yeah, it's just not gonna let me do it. In fact, I had it down there kind of, so now it's kind of stuck now. And you can also use the release lever to actually straighten the paper if it comes out like that. To whatever your liking is. And so there are uh, some different ways of moving the paper around. You can always use the return key. Sometimes they have index up and down keys that tend to move it kind of in half steps. And uh, you can almost always use the uh, platen knob to uh, move it up or down that way. So kind of one of the next things you need to do is go ahead and set your margins. So if we notice, our position is way out of line with our paper. So what we do on this is move into place using space. So I actually want it on... 20 is what I defined. That's not what I completely recommend, um, but I'll use it on 20 for this case, which is what I want. And this is just a visual indicator. It does nothing. So we have to actually tell it that that is our margin. So now if we return, it doesn't move back over. Now our right margin, space ahead here. 
space ahead, and oh, it won't let us go farther. So we have to release the index. And once we release, I can continue moving until I go where I want to end. Good old 90. And now, it will only let me go to there. So that's how you set it up. Um, and I'll kind of show you on different models how you set up margins, because each typewriter is completely different. And if you don't have the original instruction manual, play around. Most typewriters only store things in RAM. So if you completely screw up your settings, you can tend to just turn it off and turn it right back on, and it will have completely forgotten everything you just told it, usually. And some of them may or may not have had battery backup, and so you have to wait for that to die or who knows whatever else, but uh, that can sometimes get you out of bind. And then tabs are kind of interesting, which you set up specific spots you want to tab to, and then pressing tab will take you there. So typically, you would want, say, 5 as your tab, so you would press it, and then it goes to that spot. And if you don't have any more setup, doesn't do anything else, and then it gets confused and takes it to the end. So that way we can do bullet points. So that's that. So let's go over some of the options that almost every typewriter is going to have. So we've got what looks like high, medium, and low. Some different numbers and some more numbers. This one's pretty simple. It's the spacing. So if you've ever done professional writing that tends to want you to do double spacing, for this you just set it to two, and what that does is skips a line in between each return. And you can also do half, so I can do one, which would be exactly down, or one and a half, so that's a little bit more spacing, and then two, and then two and a half, which is much more. This is your pitch, so that's kind of how much space is in between each character you type, and it tends to be in one divided by number inches. So one tenth of an inch, one twelfth of an inch, one fifteenth of an inch, depending on models. And then the high, medium, low thing is your impression, which is how hard it strikes it. And this is useful for how heavy your paper is, so it's very thick paper. Or if you are back in the old days where you can't make copies, and so you have carbon paper, and so you might need to set it to much higher if you are going through several sheets of paper. Turn the typewriter off, and let's kind of look at some of the mechanics of it. So inside, we see this giant cartridge. And you can take that right out, and that's what uh, you're actually using to type with. And so it's actually a weird little material that it presses against the paper really fast, and uh, some of the stuff comes off and sticks on the paper. And what's cool about uh, these cartridges so once the cartridge runs out, you pretty much are done typing unless you kind of manually rewind it and then hope that you get enough whatever pressed into the paper with all the imprints, whatever else. And what's cool about 90% of these cartridges is they're actually correctable. And what that means is this little roll of stuff here can lift off what you just typed. Now, I mean, it'll leave some residue and kind of dent it, and it definitely can't erase any carbon copies of it but it's good enough for general use, and uh, once that kind of gets full, you just replace it, and those are really easy to find because almost all typewriters use kind of the same correction ribbons because there's not really much else you can do with them. And the next is the daisy wheel, and back in the day, your font choice was actually a physical thing. Instead of you having it downloaded in the printer and whatever, here you have a physical object that you have to switch out if you want to change fonts. So if for one line you wanted it to be cursive, you would have to actually remove your daisy wheel, put in a new one, and type your cursor spot, take it out, and put it back, put back the original one. And now, not all electronic typewriters use daisy wheels. In fact, most IBM ones, especially the earlier models, use what's called a golf ball, which is a large metal sphere, which were uh, quite a bit more expensive and uh, much bulkier. So daisy wheels tend to be cheaper. They tend to not be intercompatible with different typewriters, or at least different typewriter brands. The method for changing fonts varies, but uh, tends to be some combination of simple levers and it pops out. So that's kind of the basics of using an electronic typewriter. 
Hopefully this helps. Uh, leave your questions in the comments below for anything I wasn't very clear on. And uh, I'll probably be making more typewriter videos in the future. So please subscribe so you'll be notified right away when uh, I post a new one. Anyway, thanks for watching and enjoy your typewriter.